Hello everyone, sorry for the hiatus from full video demos and tutorials. I've been prepping my equipments for Patreon lately and will be more active there. Also, go and become a free member in there to download stuff. If you can support me by being a patron, you can just like, comment, and share my content. So this video will be the full video equivalent of the Comps Array YouTube short I posted before and will show you how to do it using random flow. And first off, we are now building a quad base mesh which is relatively light in order for the randomization to be faster, allowing us to play with more shapes in a short amount of time. You can try using tries but never ingons since the randomizers can only subdivide quads or tries to come up with the randomized patterns from those subdivided faces. But if you can make them all quads, the better. Make sure to give enough edge cuts for faces, especially the ones that are really long, so the randomizer can result to more patterns or details in those areas. Before continuing on, we're going to UV the source mesh, so the randomized mesh will inherit part of it, then we can use the shaders from the add-on to quickly texture the models. In this instance, I just use the cube projection for the UVs since the model is purely angular anyway. Select all the faces before duplication so we don't have to select them again when using the random operators. First, we're going to use random panels for the initial detail. You might see that the UI is different from what you are using, and this is related for the next update. I am updating all of the random operator UI so it's easier to see what's what, where the seed parameters are and the subdivision settings and stuff like that. The UI design will be slightly different for pre-Blender 4.2.3 compared to post-Blender 4.2.3 since the newer UI script is not available in the older version, but the UI arrangement well, generally be the same. Just play around mostly with the panel size, subdivision, depth or extrusion, and the seed values until you get something good. Good in this case being the gribbles are looking functional and make sense when viewed from the render distance you are going for. If you see geometric spiking or the geometric error where a vert results in a spike, and sometimes goes into infinity, just set the cut method to split to get rid of it. There will be a trade-off of course and the panel islands will no longer wrap around sharp edges, but the spiking is just normal behavior even for vanilla extrude and inset when it comes to groups of faces that have a lot of tight areas and sharp transitions. Select the other duplicates and repeat the action using the Shift R hotkey. If it doesn't work, just use the operator again. The settings will be the same as the last operation. Okay, now let's lay another detail using the random cells operator. I often use this to break up the silhouette with these antenna looking extrusions. When first using presets for the add-on, you might be wondering why there is no initial result, especially with low poly meshes. That is because the presets have their subdivision set to zero as default. You need to increase them manually. This is to avoid freezes when, for example, the random operators were accidentally used on a really high res mesh with the subdivision cut starting out high. Apply the random cells effect on all the duplicates. I'm using the operator on the base mesh, by the way, to select them behind the random panels result. I'm using the alt right click hotkey, which shows the objects underneath the mouse cursor, although this might be different according to your hotkey settings. Let's do a quick check of the UVs. You can see that the random panels result has inherited the UVs from the source mesh. 
This UV, however, is only for the top faces of the extrusion, and the side faces actually are not UV'd. But seeing that these models are going to be likely rendered as background assets, then those discrepancies doesn't really matter. Before using the shaders, we're going to create a base color using the random vertex color operator and just use gradations of black and white and set the limit to islands, meaning all separate face groups or islands in the selected meshes will have their own random vertex color. Now let's add the shaders using the app in materials operator in the shading submenu. You can find out more of these materials in the online documentation. Selecting all the meshes, we're going to use Creative Flow's Assign Material Operator to add one of the shaders appended by Random Flow. In this instance, we're going to use the Airflow Panel Soft UV, the suffix UV meaning the material is using UV mapping for the procedural textures. The material will be using the RGB node as the base color by default, and we need to replace this with the vertex color we made earlier using the random vertex color operator. We can add in a color mix node set to overlay to control the intensity of the vertex color. Now let's add some lights by activating the lights UV shader group node in the material by increasing the emission strength. Play around with the settings, mostly with the inner scale to control the size of the lights, the factor for its number, and offset for the randomization. If you need to add more details, just layer random panels on top of each other. By the way, you can now download the preselect add-on I'm using here to quickly select sets of faces. The link to the online documentation is in the post description. And this is it for this video. Be sure to subscribe and hit notify. Don't forget to join my Patreon. If you have any questions, use the comment section or the links in the description. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.